All right, there's young Rob Malicote, one of the changes. Buddy Biancalana has gone in to play shortstop. Well, here is what Malicote did at Columbus. He was impressive, earned an elevation to Tucson right at the end of the minor league season. He's a highly regarded young lefty. Got a real good arm. Fastball above average, breaking ball way above average. As you can see, the control is a little questionable. But you figure that he will be able to get that in command in the next couple of years. He's only 22 years old. Looping liner foul off the bat of Jefferson, who's had a big night already. Three hits and four RBIs. Funny the way it happens. In his first 37 at bats against us this year, he didn't have one RBI. Now he's been to bat three times tonight, three hits, and four runs batted in. One ball and two strikes. Malakote, you know, there was really a, a question as to whether he might make the club when we broke camp in 86. He came close. Had a great spring. He didn't pitch quite as well this spring. Almost nipped him. Two and two. He was the number one pick by the Astros in the January 1984 draft. Had a very severe ankle injury last year at the beginning of the season, and for all practical purposes, he didn't really have a season. Ended up 0 and 8 in the minor league, but really bounced back this year. And that was one of the reasons I think they put him at Columbus, hoping to get him back in some kind of a groove. Get him some confidence, put him in a league where he could have some success. So Rob Malakote in his big league debut. Gives up a hit to Jefferson, who's four for four. Oh, he's going to make you get the ball back in, too. He got benched, you know, a couple days ago. Well, he's letting Larry Bowen know he wants to be in there. Left fielder. It's 11 hits for them. Rob Malakote from St. Helens, Oregon. Ties his career high with four hits in a game. Did it back in July against the Pirates. A strike to Martinez, who's had two hits and driven in two runs tonight. Runner at first. Carmelo Martinez. A ball and a strike. Jefferson first nobody out. In there. And it's one ball two strikes. Well. Sometimes this is a good situation to put a youngster in. No pressure. No pressure. Just get out there and do your thing. Throw strikes. And you know he's motivated. He's got to be out there pretending that it isn't 10 to nothing. There's a shot fouled on the left side. And he's got a good attitude. Remember the other night we had him on radio and he says. He asked. What do you think your role is here? He says, I don't care what the role is. <laughs> yeah. Start, relief, anything. He just wants to pitch in the bigs. A ball and two strikes. Now it's two and two to Martinez. John Cruck is due up next. Padres have scored in each of the first four innings and lead 10 to nothing. Trying to take a two game edge here. Last night it went back and forth and they ended up winning it in the ninth, eight to seven. There Got him with a slider. 
That's well, the first. we finally got a strikeout. Yes, nice to put a K down on this side of the page. Look, take a look at this. Good movement, huh? Real good. That's his real plus pitch is that slider. And it's why he may end up as a relief pitcher. A left-hander, a left-handed hitter would really have trouble with that pitch. Well, let's find out if Kruk has trouble with it. He's a pretty good left-handed stick. Mm-hmm. Look at Kruk. Look at that look. <laughs> hey. He looks like Barnacle Bill the Sailor, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Foul back. He's got him in a hole 0 and 2. Malakot, our third pitcher following Scott, who just simply didn't have it. No other way to put it. Then Hernandez. He didn't have it either. One ball, two strikes. All right, as lefties go, sometimes they're herky jerky. How do you rate Malakot? Is he pretty free? Pretty smooth? Let's take a look at him a few more pitches here. One ball, two strikes. Kind of gives you a little hesitation up there at the top, doesn't it? It's a little unusual. Yeah, he's got a little jerk in that delivery. He pulls the hand out of the glove and separates the glove from the pitching hand a lot earlier in the delivery than most pitchers. Two balls, two strikes. And there's another K. K for Kruk. Get a look at the style of Malico. Number nine. Catcher Benito Santiago. Attempts to hold that arm free back behind him for a long time before he goes forward in that delivery. You know, another it appears to be on balance. You notice one of the things that I thought was different, the way he separates his pitching hand from his glove. Did you notice that? That's what I just said. Oh, that's probably why I noticed it. There's a flare into right center. So Santiago who came in with a 15 game hitting streak now has had a double two RBIs and a single. Number 35. Third baseman Chris Brown. Oh he went down and got it didn't he. He got it he didn't get all of it. He gotten a little more of it he'd been out. So now here is Chris Brown. He's over one. He's walked twice. Runners on the corners with two away. Fouled up to the right side. Jefferson with his fourth hit of the night is now at third. Santiago with his second hit is at first. They have 12 hits along with six walks. The rule has been that there's a lot of Padres on base. We're only in the fifth inning. Eighteen base runners. Lined into center, base hit. Brown hit that ball hard and he hit it with authority. So they keep on trucking. They've scored in every inning. One thing that you can say about Malakot's pitching in this inning, everything has been hard. He hasn't shown him any off-speed stuff. So a right-handed hitter that knows the breaking ball is breaking into him and the fastball is going to be fast can really start that bat. He doesn't have to wait for anything. Broken bat bouncer. Davis has got to flip it to Malakot and they get Templeton in the side has been retired. But they get another run on three hits. Weren't any errors. Two men are left. So we have played through five, and the Padres putting it on here. They lead the Astros 11 to nothing. All good horse traders know horses. The best ones know cowboys too. He needs a little work, but the price is fair. He's worth it, but I'm a little short. Just pay me half, now. If I don't hear from you, I, he knows the way home. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream. 
Head for the mountains of Bush here. On the one hand, U.S. Sprint's long-distance digital fiber optic network is so quiet, you can actually hear a pin drop. On the other hand, it's so efficient, you'll get the best overall savings, which is pretty miraculous. Call U.S. Sprint and find out how you can get the best for less. HSC schedule coming up with the Astros. Final game on this trip at Candlestick. Then when we get home with the Padres and then at Cincinnati. That's coming up on Home Sports Entertainment with the Houston Astros. Hey, the vendors are swinging. Send that guy up, he'd probably get a hit. <laughs> It's contagious. Bianca Lana batting. First time since he's been back. He played the last time we were here and went one for seven against Padre pitching. Bianca Lana batting in the ninth spot. They made the double switch. You remember when they brought Malakot on? He's had one hit in 17 at bats. One ball, one strike. He was really tight when he was here the first time right after the trade. Looked like he was pressing, and maybe now he'll be a little more relaxed. One ball, two strikes. He's so relaxed, he's swinging with one hand. Well, that's the Charlie Lau style. 11 to nothing, San Diego. High fly ball over near the left field line for Carmelo Martinez. One down in the sixth. Well, let's see. Three, six, nine. That's ten in a row. Retired by Shao since Craig Reynolds got a leadoff single in the third inning. Gerald Young. Gerald Young with a walk and a strikeout. Trying to keep going with a hitting streak. He's hit in the last ten. He's batting 313 against the league. And with the big lead, Larry Bow has decided to give Gwynn the rest of the night off, and Sean Abner's in right field. Abner, you remember last night played left. There is Abner. Well, I don't think Gwynn will need to play the rest of this game to get his 200 hits this year. He was two for three again tonight and scored three times. Gwen was. Leads the league in hits. He's in there in a lot of categories. Hits. Stolen bases. Got 194 hits now. Center field and Stan Jefferson makes the catch and it's two down. So Gerald Young flies out and Billy Doran Billy will be Doran. stepping in. I wouldn't be surprised after Doran bats if he might not get the night off. I wouldn't be at all surprised, especially after getting need in the head by and, Templeton. And he plays every pitch, every inning. Every day. There's not much Billy Doran can do about bringing a club back from 11 down the way Shaw is pitching. And there's just some games where you 
say OK you're getting pummeled. And it's a one two three inning again. Doran flies to left. Three six nine twelve in a row retired by Shaw. Padres on 20 vision making it tough to look at. 11 to nothing. Entertainment with the chicken and everybody's in on the act. Send those two guys up, they'll probably get hit. <laughs> Don't let him go up there with those microphones, though. <laughs> All right, Ron Reynolds will be the new catcher. Leading off the Padres. Second baseman, Tim Flannery. Buddy Biancalana moves to second. Chuck Jackson will be at short. When Biancalana went down to Tucson, he played some second base, so Jackson and Biancalana would be in the same situation they were in the latter stages of that triple A season. So new catcher Reynolds new shortstop Jackson Biancalana moves from short to second. I like to see Jackson get a few balls at short and see how he re reacts. Yeah. High fly ball off the bat of Flannery and Cruz is right there and it's one away in the sixth. Let's get a moral victory here and shut him out in this inning. A one two three inning. Well, I don't know if you can ask for that, but at least put a goose egg up there. There's Ron Reynolds. Chow coming out now. Number 30, pitcher Eric Chow. Nobody on, one away, sixth inning. Chow is. Gone 0 for 3 was his bat, but the way they've been hitting, he doesn't need to contribute much with the bat. They're leading with 11 runs on 13 hits, and Chow's pitching a one hit shutout. Two strikes. Abner's due up next. One ball and two strikes. Minnesota finally outlasted Cleveland 13 to 10 in an extra inning game. Still one and two. Must have been six, seven home runs in that game. That's just a natural tail, or he's not like turning it over. I don't know. Two balls, two strikes. Left field for Cruz. 
two down in the Padres sixth. Now Abner will Number be the batter. Right fielder, Sean Abner. Abner came on on the top of the inning to play right last night. In his first game against us, he went two for five. Had a couple singles and scored a run last night. At Triple A, pretty good year. One ball and no strikes to Abner. Jefferson's on deck. He's probably hoping Abner will get on. When you're four for four, you can't wait to have another swing. Left field and Cruz is going to tie a record held by many. Three fly balls to left and a one two three inning and finally they found the formula. They didn't let the Padres score in the sixth. So that's the story of it lopsided as it is. Michael Hamilton and Larry Durker. I'll give way to Bill Brown. He'll come along on 20 vision for the Astros trailing 11 to nothing. When the sun goes down, it's gonna light up the night. Silver label, red ribbon, a taste that's right. Gonna light up the night. Stomping it up here at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium. A little entertainment by the Chicken and the Blues Brothers. And celebrate they should with an 11 to nothing lead through six innings of play. We have a couple of changes for the Padres. Stan Jefferson has moved from center to left field. And Shane Mack goes in to play center. So Martinez leaves the ball game. Right fielder Kevin Bass and the Astros who have gone down 12 in a row now try to get hit number two in this inning and get around to score Kevin Bass is over two popped to third and line to third where Chris Brown made a nice play on him. Ball one. Try to come back by the Cardinals tonight. They won it in 10, 6 4 over the Mets. Well, that was almost a desperation comeback after being swept by the Expos. You're right. It might have been a real character builder for Whitey Herzog's club. Might get them turned around. They got too much talent to just keep losing the way they've been. That's true. And without Jack Clark this weekend, you know they feel that they got a lift. Strawberry and Mookie Wilson home runs for the Mets. Terry Pendleton won for the Cardinals. Strike one and two still very much undecided as far as the National League East picture Montreal hurt by the loss today to Chicago but plenty of games remaining. There are no races decided yet. No sir. This one in the West is the biggest lead four games now. There's the line shot. Kevin Bass has hit number two for the Astros. That was a two out two run homer by Pendleton in the ninth. And then Tommy Herr with an RBI number single won it in the tenth. First base. That breaks the string of 12 in a row, retired by Shao, and 
Davis who has struck out twice now to the plate. Well boy it's never more evident in the sport of baseball and the ups and downs a player can have from one night to the next. And over the course of a long season all of the players do but as a club the Astros are having their downs here tonight. Ball one. Trying to avoid their sixth loss in a row in San Diego. They have lost six in a row on the road already. Davis to right field. And back is Abner. For the catch, one out. Well, the Padres Catcher. have proven, Larry, that if they can just hold their own against the National League East, they could really be something to watch for well, next they, year. They played real well within the Western Division. They certainly have, and they scored 15 runs in a game against Cincinnati, scoring 11 so far tonight. Here, here's I kind of like the Pirates even better, though, because I like their young pitching better than the Padres. That's I think true. the Padres are going to have starting pitching problems next year. Mm hmm. Ron Reynolds looking at ball one and he's in for Alan Ashby. They've got a pretty good bullpen though. If they can piece together a decent starting rotation they could get back into contention. Two balls and no strikes. We understand that Goose Gossage could become a free agent this fall and he is 36 years old so we don't know what the Padres plan for him. Dave Meads in the Astros bullpen at the moment. Howard Johnson stole his 30th base tonight. Became the first infielder to join the 30-30 club. 30 home runs and 30 stolen bases in the same season. 3-0 to Ron Reynolds. But Johnson's had a terrific year, hasn't he? He really has. That's haven't missed Ray Knight at all. 3-1 the count. Nope. That proved to be a rather interesting situation for the Mets. Who had offered Knight a contract, but not what he wanted. That would have a pretty good contract. There's a diving stop by Chris Brown. It throws from his knees safe at second. Terrific effort by Brown. But Bass beat the play. But do you think he could have had him at first? Probably. Well, you kind of wonder in a game like this why you don't just go for the easiest out. Good point. Going to be a base hit for Ron Reynolds. And it could have been for extra bases, but for the nice play by Brown. Nice level swing for Ron. And safe at second. Jose Cruz, 0 for 1 with a walk. Ball one, that one getting away from Shao. The Padres have seven shutouts this year. They have been shut out 14 times. Astros have been blanked on six occasions. One and one. It's hard to explain the problems the Astros have had on the road because. It, they're not based on any problems on the road last year, Larry. It was a good ball club last year on the road. 42 and 37, I believe. Two and one. You look at it statistically, and the club has scored about the same average number of runs per game at home and on the road, but given up significantly more on the road. Out of play. Two balls and two strikes, and it would appear that if you'd break it down individually, a number of players are performing better at home than on the road. But uh, that's certainly not a trend based on what happened last year. So when you take a look at things over the winter, it might be kind of hard to figure. Well, you know, you have to score more on the road to win than you do in the Astrodome because there's a lot more low-scoring games in the dome. 
Oakland take as many runs to win, but yet the Astros have been scoring as many at home as on the road. Strike three call. Cruz is standing there and looking back at Dave Pallone. Departs. That's out number two. Yes, you should swing at that with two strikes, although it looked like it was probably a little low. Strikeout number five for Shaw. Here's Caminetti now with two outs. Bats into a double play and popped out to second. Strike one. Shaw in his last five outings, three losses, two no decisions. His longest outing was eight innings. In a game against Montreal, he gave up five hits and three runs, so he pitched fairly well on that occasion. His top strikeout game is eight. Oh, and two. He has three complete games and two shutouts to his credit this year. Both his shutouts came in Los Angeles. April 26th, a 4 nothing job, and a four hitter on July 1st, 4 nothing. Soft pop, Flannery backpedaling, balls it in. To retire the side. No runs, two hits, no errors, two left. There's six and a half. It's 11 to nothing, Padres. State baseball trivia time now. Let's take a look at tonight's little brain teaser. What did Babe Ruth, Tom Seaver, <laughs> Sparky Anderson have in common? This should be good. Ah, their first name, George. Hey, that's a good one. Now, when the Reds of the mid 70s had uh, several players named George, among them uh, George Thomas Seaver, that used to be a trivia question you'd hear because uh, Kenneth. Griffey's first name is George also and a lot of people weren't aware of that. 11 to nothing right here. A lot of people are aware that the Padres are having one of their best nights of the season. And Rob Malico dealing to Stan Jefferson with ball one. Jefferson with a personal night to remember. Four base hits. Three runs scored. And four driven in. One and one. What have you thought of Malakot from what you see of his motion Larry and what you have seen of him in spring training. Well from what I've seen tonight I really like his fastball and slider but everything is hard there's no off speed stuff. So if I were looking at him right now I'd be looking at him as a relief pitcher. If he's going to start I'd want him to have some sort of an off speed pitch. Foul out of play two and two. His comment during the last homestand about 
the challenge that he felt when he moved up to Tucson and again to the Astros is that he is pressing control. He said his control has improved this year but he needs to make it even better. Foul two balls and two strikes. And you could see that evidenced in his statistics from Columbus. He'd walked about a batter every other inning which isn't terrible but it's like he said a little bit more than what you would want. Les Moss will work with him on that. There's a the ball hit toward Kevin Bass. One out. Well the managerial merry go round this winter should be interesting to watch. With Gene Michael of course gone in Chicago and he says now that he'd like another job in some capacity in baseball maybe as a manager maybe a scout something uh, some people think closer to his home in New Jersey. Shane Mack batting now and he is getting in Martinez spot in the order. Mack looks at ball one so what will the Cubs and Dallas Green do well some people are projecting Pete Rose for a move either to Philadelphia or perhaps the Cubs. Up until about two weeks ago you'd think the Phillies would be very happy with the job Lee Ely has done. Mm -hmm. But they've gone a little sour lately. Don't know about Larry Boa and his future here in San Diego yet. Chuck Jackson with a chance at shortstop. And he makes a routine play for out number two. Jackson will work on his shortstop play in the instructional league. Number eight. Well, he can make the routine play. You don't really know what he will do in the major leagues but you've seen him make sterling plays at third base and good plays in center field so he could be one of those types of players who's being groomed as just a utility man a handyman who can play as many different positions as possible. Bianca Lana at second gets Kruk and the second straight one two three inning seven straight retired by Malakot in his major league debut. Through seven innings of play, it's 11 to nothing, Padres.